The next time you're at the supermarket, watch what people do when they decide whether or not to buy a product. They'll usually look at the price, and this is often the most important factor in their decision to buy the good or not. An important thing has happened here. The market has decided who gets the product and who doesn't. A type of rationing has occurred and the economic problem of what to produce and for whom to produce has been answered. So what problem am I talking about? Why is it necessary for things to be rationed? Well, unfortunately, there is not an unlimited supply of most of the goods we want on a daily basis. It's just an inconvenient fact of life that most of the things we want are scarce goods. Scarce goods are desirable products that are only available in limited quantities, such as meat, chocolates, magazines, milk, cool drinks, medical care, and so on. To obtain any of these scarce goods, you have to pay the going price for them. Now, if you're unable or unwilling to pay, you cannot have the good. You're excluded from obtaining the benefit of using it. Now, this might seem unfair. Indeed, it's tough for people with limited means to fulfill many of their consumer needs. So, why subject ourselves to this harsh and seemingly unfair system? Well, simply because the alternatives seem even worse. For instance, we could decide to distribute these scarce products randomly, perhaps dropping them all from aeroplanes. But what happens then? Well, some people might get what they want, others will get something they don't need, and some are still left with nothing. So, not a very fair or efficient system either. We could try to distribute goods on a first-come, first-served basis. This inevitably leads to queuing, which is always inefficient. General frustration, short tempers, fighting, and sooner or later, corruption and bribery. And you still end up with some people getting something and others getting nothing. Even if you're able to solve the problem of who gets what without using prices as a rationing mechanism, you're still left with the question of who's going to produce these goods and how will they do it. We'll look at this further when we get to the supply side of the market. So, to understand prices, we study supply and demand. And by doing this, we begin to understand the functioning of the whole market system.